You guys are receiving a three-course meal today. <laughs> yes. As, as my friend Frankie would say, we hungry. <laughs> All right, um, I guess Julius introduced me a little bit, uh, so I guess I'll say, yes, Julius is right. I am a senior at Conard High School. I am going to Southern Connecticut in the fall. Yes, yes, Southern Connecticut in the fall. And um, today I'm honored and I have the privilege to do part of the sermon. Farmer should uh, to be the first to receive the share of the crops, reading it over and over again. And finally, it hit me. It finally hit me. The first point I want to give to you guys is: Are we hardworking or hardly working farmers? All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, someone may ask. Well, what? How are we like farmers? How are we like farmers? How are disciples, how are Christians like farmers? And I'd say, well, we are in a spiritual sense, meaning like the reality job of a farmer is like the spirituality of a disciple. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, Jesus talks about, Jesus has many parables of his disciples being sowers and planting seeds, AKA planting the word in people's hearts. Amen. And you know, I know a little bit more about Jesus and the Bible and the, uh, and the sowing in there, so I decided to do some research on the reality of a farmer, oh. all right? So some research I got was um, some farmers run some of the most, pro um, some, some farmers run some of the most productive farms in the world, right? Immediately thought of Jesus. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. Meaning we gotta spread. We're going out and making disciples of all nations, just like a farmer. He's making, he's making farms in all these different types of places in the world, all right? Another one, a farmer decides when to plant, fertilize, etc. And immediately I thought of Heather and Julius. And the reason why I thought of this is because um, I'm sure you guys know the sister Crystal Holmes, right? Is she in here? No? Okay, that's fine. Uh, Crystal Holmes. Crystal Holmes was met by Heather and Julius, and, and um, Heather and Julius were only going to Bed Bath and Beyond to change some curtains. And as they were going, coming up to the register, um, if, I hope this message, this uh, the story is right. As they were coming up to the register, they decided to share their faith with her. And in the result, now she's a sister in Christ. Okay. Another, another story is um, in April break, the teenage men decided to go on and have a century day. Meaning, each disciple has to go and share with 100 people each. And that day was definitely exciting. It was definitely exciting. It was, it was awesome. But the point of why I'm sharing these uh, stories is because we had to physically go and share our faith. Farmers have to physically plant that crop. Right. In the same way, we have to go and physically talk. All right? Another one. A farmer's work can be very hard. Right. I love Century Day. Don't get me wrong. I love Century Day. It was an awesome day. I'm going to bring it back a little bit to that. But we had gotten a lot of persecution. It was, it was amazing. And you know, when I say me, I mean Josh Rivera over there in the back. And the reason why, because he was getting kicked out of stores. That he went in a store and got kicked out right after. And I was like, what? Is, I was like, Julius, is that Josh? Like, what are we doing? Like, did he have good breakfast or something? I don't know, but like he was going after it. He was a madman at it. And I was like, amen. I was like, that was serious. I also have a Bible talk in my school. Um, it's, it's pretty good, it's doing good, it's doing good. We have, we have many people, at, actually, first semester we had, I was doing the Bible talk at my school, at Connor High School, and then we switched off second semester for Julius to do it. And it, I can tell you, it gets hard, it gets hard. Just, just walk into Dunkin' Donuts with people just like, no, it's, it's raining too much, or no, it's, the sun is too hot, or something like that, but amen, amen. Hey Amen. It, it gets pretty hard because people are not willing to go out, but like, amen about it, amen about it. Um, Alright, one more, last one for you. One more, I did a lot of research, you guys. Many farmers like their jobs. And I, I looked at the quote or statement and I was like, uh, it, didn't, it didn't flow with me too well. And I was like, uh. And the reason, there's a reason why, I'm going to explain it, I'm going to explain it. And here we go, it doesn't really correspond. The reason why... And because 
My spiritual farming is not a job, it's my life. Right. There are no breaks. There are no breaks. There's no off and on season. This is 24-7, 365. Two. I don't just like what I do, I love what I do. I love what I do because it ultimately builds my relationship with God, with Christ. I, I love what I do because I love seeing people plant seeds. I love what I do because I love seeing the seeds grow into people's hearts. And I ultimately love what I do because I love seeing a newborn fruit being made by Jesus, by account of the rain, sun, and dirt. We're going to get into that, which leads to the, our next point. Come on. How is your food growing? Come on. I know. I'm. I was born 1992, uh, which is which is kind of like yesterday to some of you guys. <laughs> Maybe the old folks. <laughs> But uh, the reason why I brought that up is because I know, I know that there is only one way a fruit or crop can grow. Yeah. And that way is by dirt, water, and sunshine. Come on. It, it's funny, I mean, I don't know if people do this, but you can't, you can't use apple juice instead of water and try to be like, oh yeah, it'll grow, it'll grow. You can't, you can't put the plant into dark a uh, dark area and be like yeah yeah maybe it'll grow there i'll keep the water in there and the dirt but maybe not so much some sun i don't think people really do that but my favorite here is you can't use clay instead of dirt instead of putting the flower in the dirt it doesn't work right it does not work and in the same way in the same way there's only one way you can grow spiritually and that's with jesus I know this because of John 14, 6. Can you turn with that? To turn there? Let's go. Alright, I'll go. Um, it says, well, we got a lot of turners. It says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In the same way, sorry, pop quiz, real quick. Where do we find Jesus, you guys? Okay, there we go. Whoa, I was sweating real there. Okay, nice shot, nice shot. In the Bible, okay, you got that, nice. Pop quiz, where you were to find Jesus? In the Bible, in the Bible. And you know what the unique thing is? You know, what the cool thing about Jesus is, you know, there's dirt is everywhere, water is everywhere, sunshine is everywhere, in the same way, Jesus is everywhere. Yeah, Jesus right. is everywhere. Um, I got a little illustration, really quick, five second illustration. All right, so I'm a plant, I'm a plant, and um, a plant needs sun to photosynthesize, right? To eat, to eat. The plant also needs water to drink, and it needs a foundation, it needs a dirt, it needs earth to, to grow, to, to, root, to put its roots in. Now, I'm a regular person, I'm a regular person. I need food, I need water, and I also need a foundation. I need to root in. I need Jesus to put my roots in. Surprisingly, it's kind of the same. It's kind of, kind of the same. All right? All right. I don't know. This may be weird. Maybe you guys, some of you guys do it. Maybe you don't. But uh, some people say that you need to talk to your plants in order for them to grow also. And, um, yeah, I've never done that. Please, so. I've never done that. Seriously. But no, seriously. I believe you really do need to talk to your plants in order for them to grow. And, and here's, here's, where I come, here's, where I, here's where I'm coming with this. In the same way, we need to talk to each other, build relationships, show love and affection in order for us to grow spiritually. Amen. Yeah. To grow spiritually. Amen. All right? Here's a, here's a story real quick I want to I share. There was this woman who was a hard-working farmer that produced amazing fruit. And I say this with boldness, not knowing what the Lord has in store for us, but because she waited, because she waited patiently, 
the Lord, she allowed, she allowed the Lord's will to come into play. This woman began as a single mother with two sons, but wasn't easy physically or spiritually. Her two top priorities was God and her children. She loved her children by showing them the way of Christ. There was, there was a time when many in the church were dating, getting married, but still her main focus was God and her children. It shook her faith a little bit, but her main focus was God and her children. Men came and went. Uh, men came and went. Dates were in the picture, but dating was not. But still, her priority was God and her children. Sooner or later, her children had to leave her some time and grow on their own and learn the ways of Christ on their own. And now her seeds has traded two young men by the name of Dylan Woodley, reborn April 5th, 2009, and another by the name of Kyle Woodley, reborn August 8th, on August 28th, 2009. Amen. If, I, if I get a little teary-eyed, it's not because it's not I love, I love my mom, but it's because God's plan always works. So, yes. um, yeah. not only has God blessed her with two men who love Jesus, but it has also allowed her to set a marriage date for herself, October 8th, 2011. Right. My mother, Debbie Holt, has truly been blessed by God because she did it the only way, and that way is God's way. Yeah. All right. We're gonna bring it to a landing, so we're gonna bring it to a landing. All right. All right. Um, point three: your crops, your reward. And someone may ask. Oh, here, actually, let me bring up the scripture first. Sorry. Can you turn with me to Second Timothy six, or Second Timothy two six? There we go. 